don't you just open your mouth real quick and thank him for being the king of kings. Thank him for the salvation that he brought to us. Thank you so much. Church of God and Saints of Christ. Indeed, we are grateful to be in this sacred space called Sanctuary on this 2022 annual assembly. To the pulpit dignitaries, Bishop Frank G. Henson, the chancellor, a strong support and wise counsel, not only to this church, but also to yours truly. And to the chief evangelist, who in my estimation and humble opinion, is the greatest chief that this church has ever seen. The interesting thing is, I believe every leader should praise his own chief. It's a poor frog who won't praise his own palm. Your house is the best looking house on the, on the lot. Your car is the best car you've had. So we thank God for all of the officers, to the evangelists, to the elders of Israel. I am grateful to God to be in this place on this day. I am elated to have heard and seen so much on this past week and especially on today. I would like to acknowledge just for a moment and I'll get right into the message. I have a loved one in the midst, all of you are, but I have my aunt, my grand aunt, St. Vashti Key, Sister Elder of the church. She is responsible for so many songs that we sing, and I'm grateful to God to see her on this Sabbath day. It did my heart glad to see my grandfather's sister in the house of the Lord. Tongues truly cannot express how I really feel on the inside. If I could just turn my inside outside, it would stretch a core all across this city of Shaker Heights just for the joy that I have going on on the inside of me. Thankful to God, to Mother Myrtle, and for all the kind words that she expressed on today. I, I tell you, it's, it's something because we have been trained since we were little to look for some sort of affirmation, some sort of benchmark to you are appreciated or you've done good or you've reached this particular mark. When we went to the bank with our parents, they used to, the teller in the drive through used to say, you have a child in the car? You stick your head up because you want, you want something, right? You want a lollipop. Y'all don't act like y'all had never been to the bank before. I know, I know we're in church and all that, but, but, but you look for some sort of affirmation. When you went to the dentist, they, 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 they gave you a little sticker just to show you went to the dentist. All right, I ain't down your street yet. When you go to vote, you say, I, I need my sticker to acknowledge and affirm that I did something on today. Mother Myrtle, that's what you did. Not only to me, but also to this church to let us know that we are in the right direction of what the man of God set us to do. And I am overjoyed, humbled, elated to have heard exactly those words that came from your lips. We praise God for you, and we will continue to lift you up as a pillar of this church. So grateful to see Auntie Phyllis and everyone that is in the house of God who I have not seen in quite a long time. If you are a first time 
guest uh, to this Church of God and Saints of Christ, just wave your hand. We want to acknowledge you. We're glad to see you. We're, we're glad, glad to see you. Quickly but reverently to the text comes from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter number 40, verse 34. The good thing about these type of services, St. Kelly, is if this don't turn out so good, we can still say we had a good time. Is that all right? <laughs> Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. King James Version reads it like this. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple, yeah. filled the tabernacle. My Lord. And Moses wow. was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Yes, Lord. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward on in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and a fire was on it by night my Lord, in the my Lord. sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys you may be seated even in the presence of the Lord Come on, Bishop. And as you take your seat if you could just look at your neighbor to your left or to your right and tell them it's the glory for me that was that was that was the wrong neighbor. I can I can already tell. Uh, look at someone else and say, "It's the glory for me." It's the glory for me. Come on, Bishop. Missionary couple had brought some pastors over the seas to the United States for a meeting. It was a big meeting in a small town. During their free time, the pastors who, who had never been to the United States wanted to go shopping and sightsee. Even though, St. Jennifer, they were in a small town, the missionary knew that there were a small chance that one or two of them would have some difficulties finding their way around. They, he did not want them to get lost. So the missionary gave each of the visiting pastors his number in case of an emergency or in case they needed some direction. And sure enough, it was less than an hour after the missionary had dismissed those pastors to shop and sightsee that his phone rang and one of the pastors said, I'm already lost. The missionary asked St. Shadrika, well, go lay your phone down and go to the street corner, find out the name of the two streets and come back to your phone and tell me where you are. The pastor came back to his phone and reported that I am at the corner of walk and don't walk. <laughs> Dr. Francis, it's one thing to be lost but it's a whole nother thing to not even know how to be found. The reality, church, is a left to our own devices without connection to the divine, without an ordering, directing the relationship within our God and the spirit in which he has endowed us. All of us, St. Delilah, are, are easily and quickly lost. Come on, While our aspirations desires and designs in life are to get the life's best and even to God's promises. The truth, church, is without him we are lost oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and do not know how to be found. Do I have a praying church? I hate you. This is the age in which we are living in, in 2022, wow. where everyone has become their own expert about what makes us happy and how we define that happiness. What it looks like to have a happy and flourishing relationship 
even amongst our friends. We want to choose our own way, our own direction, our own desires to lead us. We are told to follow our hearts and our own instincts, listen to those things. In fact, we check in with the ancestors of the stars. Or, or what, Well, do, to do all of those things, family, is to identify yourself at being at the corner of walk and don't walk. Lost and do not know how to be found. The truth is, you really don't know how and what's best for your own life. If you knew what was best for your own life, things would be different than, than they are right now. What, what are we in need of, brothers and sisters, is to return to a place of dependency upon the divine direction. What we need is to remember that God alone knows the where of our journey and how it controls, he controls the timing of our journey. That's, that's what this text is all about. It culminates, St. Kelly, the Exodus experience. Not simply the book of Exodus, no, no, but, but the experience yes. of yes. Exodus for the people of God. And uh -huh. in fact, grandmother, they, they are on the cusp of the doorstep, the outskirts. They, they are in the suburbs of the promised land. They, uh -huh. they are almost at God's best for their lives. Now, mind you, it was not God's intention to take them on a 40-year journey around the Mount, Mount Seir that, that they would end up taking. That was due to their own lack of faith and obedience. When we come to the book of Exodus, they are almost there and they are almost in the promised land and it culminates, chief, the Exodus and it teaches us today what, we, what truly means to be free. Listen to me carefully, saints. They, they came from Egypt through the wilderness uh -huh. to the promised land. Uh -huh. Do you hear that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I, I said that there's a, those prepositions from, from, from a thing to a process to a promise. Okay. I'm going to say it again. Do you hear that? From a thing to a process to a promise. From bondage, yes. through proving uh -huh. to God's best for their life and the reason that they are able to get this from God and through and to is because they were being led by the glory of God. I need you to hear this, that many of us speak of God's glory as God's power or God's uh, manifestation in our lives in Exodus kind of way. But, but when we speak of the terms of our life, where God has brought us from and what we used to be and what we used to do and the pains we used to have, the sickness that God had to heal and the heartbreak that God had to heal from our life. But the issue today is, church, when it comes to the through and the two, we want to be independent and self-sufficient. Yes. But listen carefully, Deacon Davis, as much as you needed God to take you from your history, you needed God to take you through your presence yes. to get you to your destiny. That's the word. I feel like preaching. You, 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 you're at this place. You, you, you're, you're to and you're through must be submitted to God's direction in order to achieve promised land living. This text, this text is also opening up for us another layer of tension. Not just our desires, St. Allison, for independence and self-sufficiency, but it also adds a layer of tension of timing in transition. Let the church say timing. Because our two best issues in transition is why not yet or why so soon. When, when, when we tend to be unready or impatient 
when God is trying to move us through and to. The struggle for us, St. Terrica, is the blessing for us isn't a suddenly experience. The blessing isn't suddenly all the time. Sometimes things are progressive and take time. And that's what the text is showing us, General Baskin, that if I learn to submit my life to God's leading and timing, then I can have the fullness of divine promise in my life. God will guide us from life's worst to our best as we intentionally give our attention to his glory. It means to be attentive and sensitive to God's leading so you can stay on the right path according to God's ordained spiritual schedule. Let me say it this way. Stop trying to find your happiness and get in God's will. Stop trying to achieve your best and get to your place because when life stops becoming about you, things will get better for you. When, when you are upwardly focused, you can be forwardly mobile. When your focus is on the creator, when your focus is on Jesus, when your focus is on his will, when your focus is on his plan, when your focus is on his purpose, when your focus is on his glory, the steps of a good person are, are ordered by the Lord. And if you are ever going to get to where your heart's desire is because you have to turn your attention to the glory of God. All I'm trying to say today is we have to be attentive and sensitive to God's leading. And that's what happens in these handful of verses, grandmother. They are going to describe for us some characteristics of divine glory, which makes glory worth following. Are y'all interested today? I'm saying God knows better than you. And God is a better leader than you for your life. When, when, when we focus again on the truth of the scriptures as it revealed by the Holy Spirit, we find glory worth following that gets us to the promises that God has for our life. The text reveals for us that it's a filling glory. Let the church say filling. That's F-I-L-L-I-N-G. Filling glory. Uh, a a, a far-sighted glory. It's a flexible glory. And it's a faithful glory. Let's look at it. Why should I be attentive and sensitive to the glory of God? Because the glory is a filling glory. Watch this. What the text says the cloud has covered the tent and God has told Moses to take his tabernacle this tent that will take them take with them from place to place as they were moving from tent to tent wilderness to the promised land houses that they did not have to build and vineyards that they wouldn't have to plant God has set up a blessing in front of them if they would just follow God's direction for their life. So Moses, he constructs this tabernacle as God intends. And when they get finished with it, the verse proceeds in verse 34. It ends by saying, Moses finished the work. Moses, he finished his work. I struggled with that. When I got to that passage of scripture that Moses finished the work because there's grief attached to that. There's loss attached to that because how did Moses finish the work? Well, in order for Moses to have finished the work, in order for Moses to, Moses had to finish the work in order for us to get to the promised land. Here's, here's what happens. I don't have time, but here's what happens. When Moses is obedient to finishing the tabernacle, a cloud 
covers the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. My, my, my. I got some time. 2018. Yeah. Right. Moses finished the work. Yeah. That cloud yes, covered the tent. Yes, we, we, we're talking about 40 years. Yeah. But, but can I do some math and on, add 10 on. years to those, those, those four years? Yes, 2018 was one year. 2019 was the second year. 2020 yes. was the third year. 2021 was the next year. 2020, 40 years. Oh. 19, 20, 21, 22. He gave the word in 2018. It was pregnant with possibility until 2019. Four years later, the cloud that covered the tent. It moved us. It ushered us into the tent of the promised land. Do I have a praying church here? That cloud, that word of glory is not that we, we that is not that, would, that we would grow up hearing the, of the Shekinah glory. This bright and beautiful glory. No, this word actually is a Hebrew word that means weight or heaviness. It's a, it's a heaviness. So, so in order for Moses, in order for us to get to the promised land, Moses' work had to be complete. Uh, there, there's grief attached to that because we don't want to let go of Moses. We don't want to let go of the things that we love so dearly. But in order for us to move forward, Moses' work had to be finished. It's what happens when the heavy, heavenly weight settles down on earthly experience. It's what happens when God throws God's godness into your earthly isness. It's what happens when God shows up and gives you insight, foresight, and direction that you could not have by any other means than God showing up and showing himself to you. It is how you know how you know that you know what you know and you don't even know how you know it. It's that you know this is the opportunity for you to take and you don't know why. It's the opportunity there. There's just something inside of us that gives you a sense of divine direction. It's learning to listen, not just when there is some bright, aesthetic, emotional experience. But when there is a happiness in your gut, down in your soul, this is what the new covenant will be describing when he tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What happens in the cloud in Exodus chapter 40 happens to us in the spirit when we put our faith and trust in the work of Jesus Christ. When we are indwelt by this same glory. And when we are led by the same spirit. And as I, I yield to this spirit, we submit to the spirit. As I listen to the spirit, as I still in the spirit and quiet my spirit, my life, in order to be sensitive to this. There is a weight that rests on our lives that reminds us that life is not about me and as I move in towards God's timing in towards God's divine the weight is what pulls me forward to it someone will testify that there were things that you wanted to do and he set on you and that weight that set on you would not let you go there were places that you wanted to go, places you wanted to be even right now, but you ended up in church on a Sabbath day because the weight of glory. There were times you wanted to bless somebody out into the middle of next week and the weight set on you. And all you could say was, God bless you, baby. But, but there were times you wanted to act out of your flesh Move according to your emotion, but, but something deeper, stronger, 
something more powerful when God reminds us that he is in control. God is establishing that you are his and this is his process and purpose coming to pass in your life. It's God's house, tabernacle in the old covenant. We are in the new. Paul says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? That, that same feeling in the tabernacle is the same feeling we experience in our human condition. Mother Myrtle, it is God reminding us that we are his and we are permitted relationship by gracious invitation. We don't invite God in to God's house. We are invited in and included by God's grace. God, from time to time, will get in your business. He will get in your text messages. He will get in your DMs, your financial decisions, the way you respond to offense that comes towards you. God will get in it and throw his weight around to remind you he owns the entire house. He purchased you with salvation, with the blood of Jesus Christ. He reminds you and I that you need to pay attention to my glory because you belong to me. And your time is my time. Your car is my car. Your house is my house. Your clothes are my clothes. Your relationship is my relationship. Everything you don't, you do, you do ought to be to the glory of God. And one of the things that we do not know is we don't own anything. I don't own my house. I don't own my house. I don't own my car. I don't own my wife. I don't own anything. It all belongs to Him. That's the feeling, glory. And then there is the far-sighted glory. I think I'll take my seat there. God does not just fill the tabernacle. The text says God is also directing the journey. Do y'all see that? Throughout all their journeys, wherever the cloud was taken up, verse 36, they moved and the cloud would not move. They stayed still because God knows when and where to move. Let me tell you why. We are frustrated at times, Chief Corster, because we want to expedite or delay the timing of divine process. It's not your job to figure out. It's your job to follow. God is in charge of the where and the when. And all we have to do is not be not get left behind. My Lord. We sometimes struggle, church, with this because our social media pastors will tell us that you will feel it. You, you, you will know it when and because of how you feel. And if, and if you don't feel right, then it ain't right. That, that's a lie from the pit of hell. In fact, I want to suggest to you the less you feel like it, the more you are called to it. The less you feel like singing, the, the more you're called to sing. And the less you feel like preaching is the more you're called to it. The, the less you feel like being nice is the more you're called to it. In fact, you can't discern the will of God through your emotions. You don't have time to wait for your emotions to catch up with God's instructions. You have to move forward in what God called you to do even when your emotions feel uneasy and unready. You are in good company, church. You're in good company. Jesus didn't feel like it. He went to the cross in that garden of Gethsemane. He asked the Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. Three times he prayed and he, to find another solution to the salvation work he was called and born to do. Your emotion couldn't feel that. Your emotional condition has nothing to do with your divine calling. 
although it doesn't feel good right now, you have to get out of your feelings and get in the flow of what God has for your life. Because God can see farther than you can see. God knows if you are ever get over the emotional hurdle of obedience, you will walk in the fulfillness, fullness of the glorious blessings that he has predestined in your life. When my children were younger, we would go to the grocery store and they wanted to push the cart. The issue, Vanless Daily, arose because oftentimes they would push the cart and hit their mother in the back of the heels. Anybody been to the grocery store? I, I, I've discovered, Brother Jeremiah, that, that if, I, if, if, if I reached my hand back to grab the front of the cart. Uh -huh. Just before St. Janelle, it would hit their mother on the back of the heels. I can prevent anything from happening. Other times, deacons, other times, they, they would be distracted by other things on the shelf, you know, Fruit Loops and all this other stuff that yells bells and whistles. And, and, and sometimes you have to pull the cart forward because they wanted to push when they wanted to push. So I figured when it's time to move, St. Monique, I'll just pull the cart forward. Then when it was time to stop, I would just push back on the cart so they couldn't push the cart any further. Can I tell you something? Isn't that what God is doing in the story of your life? God knows you are trying to move at your pace. But your pace is not the best pace for your promises. So what God is doing and has done in your life, he, he, sometimes, he sometimes for us knows what is best for us and he pulls us from certain things and situations. And sometimes he pulls us further than we really want to go. But us, but sometimes when we want to push or we won't want to move anymore, he will pull us to get out of our own way, to, to mind the business that God is designed for us that we thought were going to be lucrative. The business decisions, the thoughts, the behaviors that we thought were going to, going to rid us and, and bring us some glory. Then there are times when I'm ready to move and God has my cart on standstill. Isn't that something? You prayed a prayer, you fasted, but God put you on pause. Oh, yeah. Isn't that something when you call somebody and you need them and, and you really need them for something and they say, hold on for a second. Sometimes, family, God will put your prayer on pause. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, please hold. I got to get my praise on real quick. Please hold. I got to get my breakthrough right now. God is saying, let me move. God, I'm tired of it, but, but you're going to stay here. God, they are getting on my nerves, but you're going to stay here. God says, I want to fuss. You said to God, I want to fuss, but you got to stay right here. Can I tell you why? Because I had the grocery list. Jesus is the one that has the grocery list at the grocery store and he knows what we need when we walk into the storeroom of his glory. I'm here to tell somebody today at this 2022 assembly, God has stuff on the grocery list of your life that you don't even know about blessings that you have not even thought about, that you don't even know or friendship that's on that grocery list. There's a healthy relationship on that grocery list. There's healing on that grocery list. There's, there's, there's power on that grocery list. He's pulling us and pushing us to get us to move in the right direction because it's farsighted. He can see what you can't see. Is there anybody in the house that knows that God has a farsighted glory? He can see further than what you know you can see. But not only is the far side of glory, the glory is a flexible glory. Let the church say flexible glory. Flexible glory. It's a cloud by day. Yeah. It's a fire by night. Bye, bye, bye. This is a necessity because the, the desert was hot. The wilderness was hot in the day 
and without shade, they could suffer heat stroke. But it was also freezing cold at night. And without something to warm them, they could suffer from frostbite, hypothermia. So God is flexible uh, in his glory because he knows what we need from day to day. And then he adjusts his manifestation to be what we needed at night. Uh, uh, at daytime, it was, it was hot, so they needed shade. But at nighttime, they, they, they wouldn't, the shade wouldn't do them any good. They needed something to keep them warm. When it got cold at night, I, I'm talking to someone in the building today, and I'm suggesting to you that the reason you ought to be attentive and sensitive to the glory of God because different conditions require different manifestations. And God knows what you need now because what you needed yesterday is not necessarily what you need today. And what you need today is not always what you need tomorrow. So God is adjusting God's self through the condition that they could not handle. It's because your lack of capacity to adjust to the quickly and move to be nimble, God is giving that to us so that God says, I'm going to cover you with the cloud. Church, it's going to take glory to get us there. When necessary, and cover us with fire at night. Can I suggest to somebody today that sometimes you need that big, booming, boisterous God to step up, stand up, and speak up, and make a noise in your life. And then there's other times you need God to whisper in the secret places of your quiet time. Sometimes, church, you need God to fling the door open and kick down the walls. And then there's other times you need God to lock you out of some stuff that you wanted to get yourself into, that you wish you could have access to. Sometimes, family, you need God to raise up people around you to support you, to encourage you, oh, yeah. to remind you of who you are in God and what you are called oh, yeah. to be. And then there's other times you need God to bring you some enemies and some haters and some folk that will snicker and laugh and doubt you. God knows just what you need. And when you needed it. And then the other problem is with us sometimes is we misidentify divine activity because we think God is, has to always do something or do the same thing the same way all the time. But can I suggest to this assembly to you, my brothers and sisters, that God, knowing what you need and you trusting God means no matter what it looks like right now in your life, it must be what you need right now. Rather than curse your situation and lament your struggle, sing the blues and say, woe is me. Learn how to celebrate and appreciate the manifestation of divine privilege in your life that you are in right now. He knows what you need. Yes, if you are broke, it's because you need to be broke right now. Wow. If you're struggling, it's because you need to be struggling right now. If you're hurting, it's because you need to be hurting right now. If you're frustrated, it's because you need to be frustrated right now. If you are tired, it's because you need to rest right now. He says, I know what you need because all things work together for good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. The last characteristic, last characteristic, and I promise you I'll take my seat, is the faithful glory. It's the faithful glory. Watch this in verse 36. Throughout all their journey, this is what I wanted to get to all day. Watch this, verse 36. Throughout all their journey, throughout all their journey, watch verse 38. It says again, throughout all their journey. Do y'all see that? Verse 36 throughout all their journey. Verse 38, throughout all their journeys. I'm going to say it one more time. Throughout all their journeys. Pacific Street, the Memorial Temple, throughout all your journey. Hildreth Avenue, throughout all their journey. 37th Street, throughout all your journey. Concord Road, throughout all your journey. 
throughout all of our journeys. Dexter Avenue, throughout all that journey. Suffolk Pacific, use the road throughout all your journey. Howard Street in Akron, Ohio, throughout all your journeys. Beer Street, throughout all your journeys. Ohio Avenue, throughout all their journeys. That is, God knows that they cannot take a single trip in the right direction without his direction. That's a praise break right there. No matter what step you take, there's no step you're going to take without his direction. God knows that they cannot take a single step in the right direction without his direction. Here, here's what God does. I like it because what we know outside of Exodus, we have the privilege of the entire book. But what we know is that they get disobedient. They get faithless. They challenge Moses' leadership. And they begin to complain and murmur. They ended up on a wilderness treadmill track for 40 years until the Joshua generation, I mean the new generation, has to enter into the promised land. And Exodus closes by predictably what we will know that will happen historically. God does not, U.S., change even though they were fickle and they were faithless throughout all their journeys. Even though they doubted the move of God, he said, I'm still faithful. Even though they did not want to support, he said, I'm still faithful. I'll say it again. They, 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 they are raggedy in their thinking. But God hung in there with them anyway. They, they, they were abandoning the mission. But God said, I'm going to hang in there with them. The word of God says he will rain down upon the just and the unjust. What God demonstrates in Exodus is what you and I have experienced in our lives. And that is God kept on filling. God kept on being flexible. God kept on being farsighted. God kept on being faithful. Even though you and I have acted up and acted out, and have been hard-headed and been obstinate, even though you have been disobedient, even though you tried to move, and when he said, don't move, and even though you move, when he said to stay still, God did not leave us. God did not forsake us. He did not turn his back on us. You bet, brother, you rather God continue to hang in there with us, to walk with us, to guide us, to protect us, to fight our battles, to handle our enemies, to heal our body, to take care of your children, to pay your bills. Because even when you have been faithless, God is still faithful. Yes, he is. Sometimes, yes. St. Vicky, I disobey Siri. I, I disobey Siri, and I, I tell Siri where I want to go. Then when I tell Siri where I want to go, I, I, I try to go my own way. I disobey Siri. Danielle, I, I was driving uh, to, to, to my daughter's uh, volleyball events in Maryland, and Siri told me to get off the highway and take a side route, route that I knew would be longer and out of my way. I said, Siri, I'm not listening to you. I, I'm, I'm not going to get off the freeway. I'm, I'm going to take the side route and stay. I'm not going to do all that. I'm staying on my path. It wasn't even three to five miles later, St. Jemiah, where I was supposed to go a different route. And then a truck that had turned over on the highway, and I was sitting in traffic in a complete standstill. Listen at this. Unnecessarily. Because I took my own way. Come here for a minute, y'all. I was wrong, and it took me too long. But I discovered that what Siri sees is what I see. Or what Siri sees and what I see are two different things. Yes, sir. Siri comes through my device, but, but she is not in my device. Go ahead. That's 
theory, Father Abraham Cox is in space, in the satellite. And, 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 and theory from up there sees from down here. What I couldn't see from even in my car seat. Does that make sense to anybody in the building? Because Siri is seeing higher, she could see farther, and she knew better. If I had just put my pride aside and learned to not be determined to go my own path, I could have circumvented this traffic and saved myself some time and gotten to my destination sooner than I actually did. I'm talking to somebody in this building today, and I know you are smart, and I know you went to school. I know you're making a few dollars, and, 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 and I, I know you think you, your life is all together, but there is someone higher than Siri. There's a Savior who sits high and he can see farther. Because the Savior who sits higher and sees farther he sees some things that you cannot see. Right. Grandma said it this way. He says it on Sabbath. I'm weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour. Let me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me. Guide me along the way. And if you lead me, I cannot go astray. Lord, let me walk. I'm putting all my trust in thee. I'm lost if you don't take your hand from me. I'm blind without your light to see. Lord, just always let thy servant be. Lead thee. Oh, Lord, lead thee. Guide thee along the way. Is there anybody in here that knows he's a good leader? That Jesus, the Savior of the world, he's the one that walks with us. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Why don't you put your hand in your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor, I'm going to follow where Jesus leads. And I don't know about anybody on the promised land, but I feel like thanking the Lord for leading us and guiding us along the way. Why don't you just help me close the sermon and say glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. I, I think this crowd wanted to get into it, so can y'all look over there at them and say glory, 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 glory. All right, let's give them a chance. Why don't you look at them and say glory, 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 glory. Now put your preacher voice on and say glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, friends don't treat me like I used to. Since I laid my burdens down, every round goes higher and higher. Since I laid my burdens down, Say yes, say yes, won't he do it, I said won't he do it, won't he make a way out of no way, it's glory for me, won't he pick you up and turn you around, it's his glory for me, I don't want to go where his glory is not, why don't you take time and throw your head back and say yes yeah yes living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising up he justified freed my soul forever one day good god almighty one day he's an old glorious day I know it's COVID but why don't you F5 somebody and say we made it we made it we made it, we made it. Ah, 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 yes yes we made it 
Yes, yeah. I was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, buried deeply, stained within, sinking to rise no more. But something happened. The master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry from the water. He lifted me, now safe am I. What's the recipe? Is <laughs> love, 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 love lifted me when nothing else could help me? Love me up, love. He stood me up, love. He's holding me up, love. He, he's me up, yes, yeah, yeah, won't he do it, I said won't he do it, I couldn't wait to get here, so I feel like hollering one more time, yeah, 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 won't he do it, won't he do it, say yes, I know he's all right. I know he's all right, all right, all right, yeah, he's all right, yeah, he's all right. wings of love abide you. God will take care of you. Won't he take care of you? Won't he do it? I said won't he do it? He brought joy down in your soul. Somebody say joy. Say joy. 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 Joy, 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 joy. Keep a joy down in your soul. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I feel all right. Feel all right. Feel all right. Feel all right. Went to the water. Water was cold. Chill my body, not my soul. Cold and short, hate my fair. Think I shout when I get there. He's all right. He's all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah! 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 He's all right. He's all right. He brought joy. Yeah! Yeah, 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 he brought joy, he brought joy, he brought joy, yeah, yeah, who won't have 